Magic Sean. And the question is, is it better to get a splash and go or soaking stone if my goals are sharpness, polish, and feedback? And the second part of the question is, is the soaking stone's results or feedback worth the lost time? Your technique is gonna dictate the sharpness. So the sharpness has nothing to do with what stone you're using, it has more to do with how you're gonna sharpen it. So the better sharpener you are, the cheaper the stone you can use and still achieve very good sharpness. Uh, so the responsibility upon sharpness is upon you, not the stone. So don't depend on your tools to give you the best edge, depend on your own skills and your own ability uh, you know, to, to achieve that edge. The second part of the question is polish and feedback. So polish and feedback, so certain stones such as the Naniwa Super Stones offer very high polish um, and very poor feedback. Uh, stones like the Chorceras offer decent polish but very good feedback. And then stones like the King 1000 offer no polish but very good feedback. So again, uh, polish and feedback has more to do with the actual stone, what you're using and what you're used to. Are soaking stones worth, uh, worth it? Uh, are they worth the time that you lose uh, for soaking and, uh, and gain in terms of feedback? Well, it really depends. Uh, in my life today, as of right now, you know, in, uh, in 2018, um, I don't have the time where I can soak a stone for 35 minutes, 45 minutes before I sharpen it because I have three kids at home and a wife. Um, I no longer have my dog, but I still have three kids and a wife. And it's very hard for me to time um, you know, a time or set a time aside that I can go and sharpen my knives, whether it's a 15 minute sharpening session or half an hour sharp, uh, sharpening session. For me, it's very difficult. And so for me, splash and goes make a lot more sense because of my lifestyle. Some people, if you are, you know, whether you have kids or not, or you have more of a, a more fluid style lifestyle, then yeah, soaking stones are great. Uh, again, they do offer slightly better feedback according to my personal opinion. But some people like to sharpen their knives in the morning. So if you work, if you're that type and you wake up in the morning and before you make breakfast, grab your stone, throw it into some water, make breakfast, have breakfast and come out and sharpen your knives. Uh, for some people, it works better at dinner time. So if you are a nighttime sharpener and you want to use soaking stones, um, before dinner, soak your stones and then after dinner, sharpen your knives. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, so again, it really has to do with more of your lifestyle than what I think, my opinions are only relevant to what I think and only relevant to my personal life. And so you shouldn't depend uh, upon what I say <laughs> uh, to make your stone decision, uh, a stone purchasing decision. Um, I say if you have a lot of time and you like the feedback and you like the way stones feel, if they are soaking, if you wanna have more of an organic feeling stone, soaking stones are great. You know, if you don't have a lot of time, then splash and goes are gonna be the way to go. Um, but as a note, as a kind of a side note upon this, uh, splash and goes have caught up to soaking stones. And so as of today, again, 2018, you can buy quality splash and goes that will feel uh, just as good, if not better than some soaking stones. Just because a stone is soaking doesn't mean that it's gonna be a great stone. Um, there are some king stones that are soaking that are just like, like, like mud after you soak them for longer than a half an hour. You have to get what's right for you. Don't listen to one person's opinion on this topic. Uh, look at your time, look at how much time you want to spend sharpening your knives and how much time you want to spend soaking your stones before you sharpen your knives. And so if those things don't make sense, then the splash and go is the way to go. Manol Radu, and the question is, do you recommend using an angle guide for sharpening and why? Here, there are two types of angle guides I have used. Um, I'm sure there are others, but these are just uh, two that I have used. One I cannot find, but there is one that's like a wedge and it basically sits on your whetstone. And so what you do is you place your, your wedge on the whetstone and you put a rubber band on it and you can use your knife, lay the knife onto the stone or onto the wedge and you know, kind of estimate your angle that way. These work fine. Uh, the other one is actually a clip-on that you clip onto the spine of the knife and you put it onto the top, you know, the back half of the knife. You lay that onto your stone and that sets an angle for you. They both work to a certain degree. I don't love them and here is why. Um, from a technical standpoint, what happens with your knives as you are sharpening? This knife here is a knife I would not recommend you or any sort of a knife, whether it's a Dalstrong 8-inch uh, shog Shogun or any knives with a very rounded profile or rounded belly. Um, that sort of a, you know, you don't want to sharpen those type of these type of knives with a push and pull. When you use a push and pull on rounded belly knives, you tend to over time will strength, or straighten that belly out. 
And so with this sort of a knife, sharpened with more of a nice stroke, you know, a nice single stroke, nice, nice even stroke, and a single, single stroke, or you can go double stroke where it's back and forth. That sort of a style is not gonna work well with any sort of sharpening angle, especially ones that you clip on the spine because your angles actually slightly change depending on where on the, where on the knife that you're sharpening. And so these angle guides will tend to lock you in on a certain angle and not give any sort of um, leeway and not teach you how to sharpen by feel. Um, so I don't really recommend it for that. And also the other problem with even this sort of a wedge, even though it's not a, it's, you don't clip it to your knife, when you are sharpening your knife from the heel and the tip, most people don't realize this, but you actually sharpen your tip at a slightly different angle. And so what happens as you're sharpening the heel of the knife and the tip, your angle actually changes. Sometimes it actually helps you to sharpen the knife even better as you raise your angle by a degree or so when sharpening the tip and you turn the knife slightly more perpendicular to the stone or more vertical to the stone. And so by locking yourself in to a set degree or a set measurement by a wedge or by a clip onto the spine of the knife, it again, it takes away from your ability to learn how to sharpen by feel. I always go by feel. And so, you know, do I recommend it? Mm. If you are, if you are trying to set a new angle on your knives and you are trying to get a 12 degree and a 20 degree on two different knives, you can use an angle guide as a point of reference. From day one, I have never used an angle guide when I've sharpened my knives. And even today, I don't really use them. Um, I might use them once in a while to demonstrate certain angles and to actually lock down certain angles. But in terms of actually learning how to sharpen your knives and learning how to develop a good sharpening technique and good sharpening habits, I don't recommend using angle guides. The other big problem that I see with angle guides is that they leave massive scratches on the spine of your knife. A model steel knife, that's fine. A, you can actually polish those out pretty easily. But if you have a Damascus knife, a Damascus cladding, or a, uh, or a hammered finish knife, or a Tsuchime finish knife, it's gonna ruin the finish. And it's, you're gonna hate yourself for it. I have dozens of people who actually have written me on Facebook with photos telling me this, and I feel sorry for them. So do I recommend them? The answer is no, I don't recommend them. Not because they don't work, but they don't work very well, and that you develop, you're more likely to develop bad sharpening habits, and habits that are hard to break, and also you are slowing down your ability to develop a sensitivity to what the knife is doing on the stone. Okay? HKS724. All right, so the question is, hi Ricky, great video. I'm not sure what video it is, but thank you very much. Um, my confusion, my main confusion when I see, when I'm seeing sharpening techniques is how sometimes the entire blade would pass, uh, would get pass, but would get a pass, but in some other tutorials, you work it in sections. Uh, from my sharpening experience, it's definitely more efficient to work in sections, but my fear is that uh, it would produce a wildly uneven, uneven burr, especially at the transitions. Okay, so because uh, honest, honestly, my eyes aren't precise enough to ex to exactly pinpoint where uh, where to start in the next section of the blade. Can you please shed light on this? Um, thanks. Okay, so uh, basically, we're looking at two to three different questions here. The first question is, why do I use the entire? Why do I sharpen the knives with the uh, entire section of the blade versus sections? So let's talk about that one first. Why am I sharpening some knives? in one smooth stroke versus pushing it in sections. Well, the first, uh, real, the basic question, um, really the truth is it has more to do with the profile than my actual preference of um, technique. Um, this knife here, this Jalstron here is a very curved profile. So these knives here tend to do a lot better in an arc motion when you're sharpening it because you can simply flick your wrist and allow your wrist to bend and pull that cutting edge on the stone very smoothly. If I try to do the same thing on this shoon here that is very straight, you see here it's actually not very comfortable and also if you look very closely, a lot of these knives uh, edge is actually skipping on certain areas of the stone. So that's generally not recommended for knives with very straight profiles. Knives with straighter profiles, you'll see me do much more straight linear push and pulls. That is how I get all of the edges on the stone or on the knives on the stone. With this knife here, a very curved knife, 
if you do push and pulls over time if you are not careful and you're you know you're not applying even pressure and even sharpening time across the blade the blade will eventually develop flat spots and so for me it has more to do with the care of the of the knife and how to maintain the knife as long as possible and so knives with, with rounded profiles i do straight rounded strokes entire strokes and knives with straighter profiles i do push and pulls Okay, so as simple as that, um, you know, one technique is not, is not better than the other. And you mentioned efficiency. Yeah, true, the push and pull can take off more materials because you put grinding directly on kind of a perpendicular axis on the actual knife itself versus something like this where you might be pulling at a slight angle. So true, the push and pull does take off more material. But if you are using the push and pull on the wrong profile, then you're actually not being very efficient at all. You're actually going to ruin your knife and ruin you know, all the work that you uh, are trying to achieve by using the wrong technique or a technique that is not really optimized for that blade type. So um, hopefully that answers that question. In terms of the second part of the question, in terms of uh, how to know your eyes aren't good enough, my eyes are not good enough either, okay? So my eyes are not good enough to know exactly where the transition starts and stops and where the burrs are. I go all by feel. And so I simply feel with my fingers where the burrs are in areas that need a little bit more sharpening. I may focus there a little bit more. But to avoid that issue, Instead of thinking in terms of sections, instead of doing like top section, middle section, and bottom section, move in a very smooth transition. So what you do is you are sharpening the tip of the knife, and as you are sharpening, you count you know, four or five strokes, and then you move a half an inch, four or five strokes, move a half an inch, four or five strokes, move a half an inch. And so by doing it that way, you aren't necessarily creating any sort of hard transitions, but much more of a gradient, a gradual transition between the tip and the heel. So that's the best tip I can give you in terms of how to minimize uh, uneven bird development is by, you can either count your strokes, again, count five strokes and then move it half an inch, five strokes. By doing it that way, more than likely that's good enough for most people. If you want to be even more careful like myself, you might want to go one stroke, two strokes, and you keep moving it every two strokes down the plane of the stone. But for me, I typically do about two to three strokes per section and I move it about a half an inch at a time. So it looks more like this. Okay, that's how I sharpen my knives. Uh, I choose the profile or I choose the technique that I use based on the knife's profile. Um, that makes it easiest for me to decide. That way I don't have to debate, you know, what I'm going to use. The knife's profile dictates the sharpening technique, and then based on that, then I will decide what stone to use, uh, you know, and all that good stuff. So hopefully that answers your question, HKS. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna give you guys a couple of confessions. I have always wanted to be a food reviewer. Uh, growing up, I've always seen those, you know, stickers or those uh, Zagat reviews, and I said, man, it'd be so cool one day to be a food reviewer and get free meals <laughs> uh, at restaurants. Um, but you know, I'm not expecting anything for free. Uh, I'm thinking of two things. So I want kind of want to hear your idea on two things. First, I do want to do a food vlog on perfection, but it's not going to be any food vlog. I'm just gonna go, I'm not going to go to any random food uh, location or random uh, restaurant and just eat and just talk about the food. Wherever you are, whether you're in Los Angeles, um, Nebraska. Um, Chile, <laughs> Switzerland, wherever. Let me know where you work. And I wanna do like a food vlog where I travel around the country, around the world. I think that would be a really fun thing. And then while I'm actually th out there, I'll do some vlogs of like the city of me traveling as well. But if you guys like that idea, let me know in the comments. I definitely wanna hear from you. But if you guys wanna have more custom knife makers featured on Perfection, Give the video a thumbs up. Let me know in the comments that you guys want to meet more people like that. I want to meet more people like that, and I would love to have you guys come on board and uh, you know go on these journeys with me, where I can meet custom knife makers in their studio, see how they work, look at really unique looking knives. Uh, I think that would be really great. So let me know what you guys think of those two ideas, and uh, you know let's add some flair, some flavor to perfection. <laughs> we gotta have some food in here too. If I meet you in your restaurant, if you're a chef, I don't care if you're a chef or a line cook, uh, you know give me a lesson on knife, uh, knife control, knife tips, uh, and I want to see what you guys use. I don't know. I, I think this can really go to many different places, and it can be really different, and uh, I can really 
uh, I can really learn a lot because uh, I'm really an amateur when it comes to knives and it really I'm an amateur when it comes to food and food culture and I just want to learn more uh, you know I've got some supporters on patreon which will help pay for these things so uh, I can't do them very often but I do have people who are supporting my Patreon that will help make this happen. Uh, if you guys like that idea, hop onto my Patreon page. Consider being a supporter of me uh, on Patreon. Whether you guys support me or not, I still will want to make these, you know, these two ideas happen. So at my current support level on Patreon, I can do this sort of a trip maybe once every three months or so. But if my support grows, I can probably do once a month or once every other month, or whatever it may be. But if you guys like the idea of one and you guys want to support me on this in this endeavor, uh, please consider going to Patreon and looking at uh, you know supporting me there. Uh, if not, you guys will still see the content that uh, that I'll be putting out. You just won't see them very frequently, but you guys will still see the same content. And uh, yeah, so that will be it for this video. Thank you guys for being here, and I'll catch you in the next video.